Slavery, an American institution that lasted over 200 years. But between 1854 and 1859, free staters and pro-slavery rebels were involved in a border war between the Kansas Territory and the state of Missouri. These battles were attempts to influence Kansas to enter the Union as a free or slave state. It's referred to as Bleeding Kansas. Unlike most abolitionists who still advocated peaceful resistance, these men used violent actions to abolish slavery. Of all the men involved in Bleeding Kansas, none left a legacy, like John Brown. He believed that all people were equal in the eyes of God, so therefore racism and slavery was such a sin that it had to be wiped out. So he saw this as the theater of action where he could, he could really start the process of ending slavery. John Brown and his sons, they would fight and he would get together uh, blacks and whites to fight with him. Now he came out here purely to fight. He came out with a load of weapons. As a matter of fact, Samuel Adair you know, wrote in a letter when, his, when, his, when he arrived, he says, a brother-in-law of mine has lately arrived from New York. He has very much the warlike spirit. John Brown was called a terrorist to many white people because they would be fighting these people wherever they were. And they fought down just below Lawrence, Kansas, and uh, finally kept fighting until they went all the way across the country. And that's when he got caught at Harper's Ferry when they started to raid the armory there. And even then, he was double-crossed because he had a group of whites and blacks that were supposed to have gone with him on that raid, but they didn't show up. And then, as a consequence, he didn't have enough money, enough men to make that fight, and they shot him, healed him up, and then hanged him at Harper's Ferry. Well, his goal was to gather up arms from the National Armory in Harper's Ferry, Virginia. And what he wanted to do was gather up those arms and gather up slaves, free slaves, and take a certain percentage of them, train them to be, to be guerrillas, go down the App Appalachian Mountains, go out of the Appalachian Mountains, send them out to plantations, free so many slaves it would cripple the southern economy and deprive them of slaves. He wanted to keep doing this till he got literally down to the Gulf of Mexico. Now, if that sounds like something would never work, a lot of people believed it did, and so much so the Union Army believed it did, because that's roughly what they did in, in a larger fashion with more men in Sherman's March and throughout the South during the Civil War. Brown was just doing, thought he could do it uh, on, a, on a smaller and slower scale. John Brown's raid on Harper's Ferry was the battle that started the Civil War, and it made him a hero to many. Well, the, you see the statue behind me was erected because of what he did for the black slave. Things that happened here had a national and international impact in this area. And this is, this is why this history is so important.